can you see me now? Hi. Hello, <laughs> everyone. I think and we are. Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? We had a beautiful day here in South Georgia, a beautiful weekend. And, you know, it was supposed to rain a little bit yesterday, but we got very little. Mm -hmm. Got a lot done out in the garden. So uh, we just came from a neighbor's house. Just came from a neighbor's house and eat a big old oh. belly full of fish. If I conk out, it's from. Uh, over the fish. fish over like speckle fish. Ah, hey, Anita. Anita's with us. Anita and Stan from uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, so uh, we had a good weekend, got a lot done. We actually Friday went over to Dothan, Alabama, to a festival over there or a meeting, whatever you want to call it. Homestead. Yeah, Keepers of the Old Ways. So a lot of our friends was over there, and we went over there and visited with them Friday, and it was pretty cool. It was pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people had booths set up there, and they had classes going on and everything. So in the past, they've had it at Bluntstown, Florida, but they moved it to, to Dothan, Alabama. And I like the venue better. I love the venue. Yeah, and it's the uh, it's a bigger town, so they can draw so more. So it food. was Friday and Saturday? Friday and Saturday. Yeah. We went Friday. We snuck down there. Yeah, they was worried about uh, the weather on Saturday, but it didn't get too bad for them, I don't think. So, anyhow, we got very, very little rain here yesterday yeah. afternoon. In fact, I'm watering ear gate right now as we speak. But uh, got a lot done. I got my green beans planted today. I got my irrigation put in my old race. You bed. are so proud of yourself. I am so proud of myself. Yeah, I have asked and asked <clears throat> somebody to help me for weeks. And he did not have time. So today after lunch, I said, I'm going to do this. And I did it. All by yourself. All by myself. Which only got half of them done because I got to wait till my garlic onions come up. But um, Raised bed irrigation kit. You got half of your raised beds irrigated. I do. It was really easy. Yeah. I think you you doing that. My mama's kind of helped. Yep. Yeah. People really are intimidated easy. by that kind of stuff. It's really just plug and play. That's uh, all it is. It was. I should have filmed it, but I didn't. Maybe when I do the other half, I'll film it. But it was easy. Yep. And now I don't have to worry about what are my tomatoes. Just <laughs> turn on. <laughs> and you know what? You could inject in there. I did plan to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my next thing. I'm going to have to snitch an injector yep. system from your inventory. Oh, we got scissor tail. Is that right? Scissor tail. I'm uh -huh. going to put my glasses on. Hello from Arkansas. Just installed our Hall strip irrigation system day 11. Cool. Which one did you put in? Did you put the uh, the raised bed, the small irrigation, or the eight mil? Eight mil. The uh, I actually finished up on a bed of mine today with a small irrigation kit. Hello from sunny Southern California. It's been a beautiful weekend. It has here too. I mean, it's been beautiful. We just a little bit of rain yesterday. Besides, today was awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm, I started some strawberry wine. Yep. From my strawberries. We've had a good strawberry crop this yeah, year. Wow. I got that strawberry wine going. I hadn't made any strawberry wine in years. Yeah. I think I've got everything. My corn's up. I think I've got everything planted pretty much. Believe it or not, I got tobacco growing. And I've looked at it today, and it needs to be. I'm probably going to plant it later this week. It's, it's ready to plant. If it, this is my first time ever growing tobacco, and I tell y'all, to, tobacco will test your patience. Mm -hmm. It is slow, slow growing. All right, Sister Tess said we started our house native tomatoes too early. How often should we fertilize them before planting? Oh, they're two feet tall and you haven't planted them? Ooh, get them in the dirt ASAP. Uh, mm. I fertilize mine about every two weeks is normally about what I'm on. Two-week schedule, something like that. A week to two-week schedule. You can bust it down and put it in uh, every seven days. We either do a full fertilization every other week. Emma's yield says, that, is any specific micronutrient watermelons need, and there anything you can do to make them sweeter? Uh, yeah. Uh, watermelons need boron. They need a lot of things. So that's the reason we recommend using the micro boost. It's got all that in it. And believe it or not, watermelons need calcium as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the reason we recommend using the MicroBoost. It's got everything you need it besides your three main nutrients, which is your nitrogen, phosphorus, and your potassium that's in your regular fertilizer. So if you use a well-rounded fertilizer and use the MicroBoost, you'll have everything you need. Is there anything you can do to make it sweeter? Yes. Don't overwater. So if you have a wet year, your watermelons are not going to be as sweet. And if you have a drier year and you keep them up to a little bit on the dry side when these watermelons are maturing out, they seem to be sweeter. There's nothing you do about the weather if you get a lot of rain, but if you can do it all with irrigation, when there's water, you don't want to order, overwater them so much when those watermelons are big and ripe for harvest. Harlan Porter, do you grow any interest fruits? I'm trying to grow some Maui gold pineapples from Hawaii that I got there visiting my wife's family. We planted two pineapples. I don't think they made it. I don't think they made it. A friend of ours gave us two. Um, they didn't make it. I do have a dwarf mulberry bush that's really interesting. We ate some yesterday. Mm -hmm. oh, love that. It's kind of a tart. It's kind of between, a, I think, a blackberry and a raspberry. Don't you yeah, think? yeah. And we grow, we love figs. We got a bunch of fig trees. So uh, that's kind of our thing. We like to grow things that are easy here. Figs are easy. Mulberries are easy. That's, that's our thing. Is we try not to step out of the uh, our comfort zone too much on fruits because we don't want anything that takes a lot. You have got to set symmetry. Mm -hmm. We don't want anything that takes any special care. But somebody gave us a pine apple tree, but that Arctic cold kind of guy. Yeah, I think so too. Didn't make it. John C. says, hello all. Hello, John. Plant some tomato plugs from you today. Seeds later. Thanks for a great company that actually likes its customers and wants them to see them do well. John, that's our whole purpose, believe it or not, is to help you grow your own food. That's what we're all about right there. That is our slogan. That's our business model to a T. Yeah. And talking about seeds, we've got a sale going on till 11 o'clock tonight. Yep. There's a lot of seeds that are 50% off. That's what I hear. So take advantage of it. And our shirts, like I don't all our it. shirts, you don't have one on, are 75% off. Really? Really. <laughs> We're trying to uh, move the stock out so we can design some new shirts. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Kiss my grass acres. I'm worried about my tomatoes. They're about eight inches tall. I'm not sure if we can put them out. Seven A. Yeah, I don't know about you, but we're good here in, in eight. Um, Pecan trees have already bloomed Is out. Is that a sign? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All the old timers say when the pecan trees bud out, the cold weather's gone. And all ours are. And we just had ours, one, but now all yeah, of them are. We got an early Easter this year. So next weekend next is, Easter, is Easter. So you, we're, we feel really good here. Y'all were normally two weeks behind us. So I would look at my 10-day forecast and see what it looks like. If the 10-day forecast looked good, put them out. I would probably put them out. I think you're better off to try and do that than you're allowed to get stunted in a pot. Mm. Take your chances. And you know what? You can cover them up if you get a bad, bad cold spell. Put some five gallon buckets over them. Yeah. Or I use that blanket we said, that frost yeah. protection. That worked really good. Yeah. True. LaDon Hilly, I have a raised bed that is shaded half of the day. Are there any vegetables that would grow well there? Mm, that's um, a tough one there, LaDon. You know, LaDon, I have one that I didn't figure out till here recently. I have a big pecan tree that shades it out in the afternoon. And so what I've done is planted some flowers. There. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Pollinators and pretty all at mm -hmm. the same time. Yeah. I didn't realize I kept having trouble growing cucumbers and other things during the spring. Now during the fall, I could plant my garden peas and a lot of things well. And um, I think it was Tracy from Just Stick It. It says, Sheila, you know, you got all that shade from that pecan tree. <laughs> I never noticed it. Yeah, just on that one side. 
What pressure is recommended for your drip irrigation? I'm thinking about putting it on a gravity fed or rainwater tank. Mm. All right, so let's explain this to you. It takes about 15 pounds minimum pressure to make it work. The problem with putting it on a gravity fed rainwater tank is do your little research because I've already done it. It's going to take about 30 to 35 feet in the air to get enough pressure to make it operate. So I'm not saying it's not possible. However, it's not feasible to do that. I had a lot of people in the past try to do that. Nobody really been successful at it because you got to get that tank so high in the air to generate that pressure. D Birdwell. Hey, D. How often should I fertilize scallop squash? Yeah, we got a fertilizer schedule on our Hosh University. Uh, you can go to the look on the D. If you got them in raised beds, we got one little program. If we got it in you know, on the, what we call the flat, we got another program. Normally, every week to two weeks. Yeah, seven to ten days. Yep. When every time you fertilize, you're better off to fertilize less than more because more will burn. You can always go back and add a little bit more. So that's the reason we always recommend the air on the side of caution Gosh. when you fertilization. Less is more. You know, you got those people. I got a friend of mine that uh, mm -hmm. he's if one a of, little bit does something, a lot would do better. I got this I friend. Had that issue. You didn't have that issue. I got this friend. I had this conversation with him yesterday. If the doctor tells him to take two pills a day, he's going to take, take four. He's an overachiever on everything he does. And what it does, it causes him problems. He said he planted all his greens and none of his greens came up. And he says, I think I put down too much for a lot. I said, I bet that's probably what it was. Mm. So you got to be careful to overdo things. We got left a present today. Yeah, somebody left us somebody a raised left bed. Us a square raised bed. Homemade. Homemade, and it's gorgeous. So need somebody to fess up to leaving that place. I kind of got an idea who it was. Hey. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not sure, but I got an idea. Oh. <clears throat> Cajun Martin Farm. I just ordered some more sweet corn. Didn't like the stand I got on them with retry and good eating them. Good folks. You know, if you plant that sweet corn in the dirt, it's too cold, too cold. Sometimes it will cause it not to come up real good. I've it's had that up. problem. Mine's up. But mm -hmm. I waited this year to the middle of March before I planted mine. My soil temperature got up. I have planted it in colder soils before. Sometimes you have an issue getting a good stay in there. Tiger Head Terry says, my soil is too acidic for potatoes. Oh, wow. I was going to align it. How long before I can plant, you think? Normally, Terry, it takes about three months for lime to completely activate. That's a rule of thumb there. So I, I wouldn't let that hold me up a whole lot. But it, you, the sooner you can get your lime out, the better off you are. But you definitely know what your pH is, and I'm assuming you do. So good deal. Good luck on that. I'm in 7A. This is Mary. Long Island, New York. Long Island. Wow. The 7A? I'm wow. putting my seedlings out until the week before Mother's Day. I've heard a lot of people say Mother's Day, for those up north, is the, you wait to after Mother's Day. Yeah, which is May 10th. I don't know. First of May. I got Easter totally wrong on our previous video. Oh, did you? Yeah. This is coming weekend. I know, but I had said it was like May 12th and it's actually May 12th. I mean April 12th. I was totally off. You, you must be <laughs> no. I always get my days. Usually Easter's close to our daughter's birthday. And it is this time. No, it's a couple days before. Oh, a couple yeah. days. Yeah. But anyway, I had it totally wrong. Oh, oh any ideas on raised bed irrigation? I'll let you take it. Sheila K. On we that. have a raised bed irrigation kit, and I just installed it today all by myself. I'm so proud. Very easy. There's a video out there where Greg put it in for my mother. And um it's it's once you get the main line and the tubing, it's just some of the beds, I put two rows, some I put four. It, it was, once I got in the groove, I was, it was really easy. Plug and play. Plug and play. And the box has instructions. 
Um, I did have to go over there and pepper her. She, she got a little roadblock. I had to, she's trying to put the wrong end of the goof plugs in. Yeah, there. I couldn't get them to quite fit. It's because I was the wrong wrong end. Yeah, well, that was my only hiccup. That was your only hiccup. I was yeah. proud of you. Yeah. All right, here we go. Leslie Kiss American Farm. I'm in 6A. When should I put my tomatoes and peppers in the ground? 6A. Woo! I wonder if our mic's on here. Yeah, you're going to have to get with some of your folks up there that knows more about that than I do. We're in zone 8, so we've got ours in the ground now. I'm assuming probably sometime in May. Mm -hmm. Probably after Mother's Day. Yeah. Would be a good rule of thumb. Yep. Anybody in here from 6A, if y'all could give her some advice on that, that would be a good deal. All right. Terry, Rosie, Rosie, going to Garden Flat. Lots of critters around, deer, rabbits, groundhogs. Any thoughts on how to fence a big garden without going broke? So what I did, I got an area out there where I have a problem with rabbits. What I did is I went to Home Depot Lowe's, forgot which one it was, and I bought some 24-inch rabbit wire. It wasn't that expensive, and but, I and I got me some regular wood posts, and I cut them like in thirds. But when we have a perimeter fence, we do that. Are, it's what about five foot high? Yeah, but it didn't. It didn't do much good. But for deer, it does. Yeah, you deer, think deer would jump over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the heart. Man. We've never had a problem. Well, we just don't have deer up here. I do have a bad, bad problem with rabbits though. Yeah, we have deer across the road, but, but they've they never come never over here. Uh, so I use that. I put I took regular wood posts and cut them in thirds and uh, put them up. And I got a two foot fence high, which is perfect for rabbits. Now we don't have groundhogs. I don't have that issue. But for the uh, for the deer, we're good on the on the deer. Get a look on that. Mm. Yeah, I don't know much about that. Gabe C Seven B Blue Ridge, Georgia. Ooh, we love Blue Ridge. Mm. Looking like mid eighties now. Next week here, any tips on keeping the lettuce from bolting early? You should be fine. Uh, I got lettuce planted down here. I don't think the 80s is going to cause it to bolt much. Now, it's growing like crazy. Whew. But uh, you should be fine. The nights are still a little bit cool, so that's good. Now, get on up into May. It's going to be getting kind of tough mm -hmm. on us to grow lettuce in, but should be fine now. We're going to have a lot of salads. we got a lot of, lot of lettuce. In the next two weeks. I love growing lettuce. Louise Cornwell, for the last two years, I'm having trouble germinating tomato seed. Never had a problem before 2021. So, Louis, what kind of tomato seeds are you trying to germinate? Is it one of our varieties? Is it a, a OP variety? Uh, let us know which one it is and we'll kind of expand on that. Is it a pelleted variety? Because there is a couple of tricks to some of those varieties there, or those pelleted seeds. John Rock says, I just love the roaster tomato variety. How does it rate to the other varieties you grow? Thank you. Uh, it, it's, it, it's really a good tomato. The only problem for us in the springtime is roaster is not tomato spotted whip virus resistant. So therefore, it is a great fall variety for us. A lot of people here grow it in the fall. We don't grow it in the uh, in spring simply because of that. It's a cicada variety. It's a good one. Nothing wrong with it. Great variety. But it just fits our slot better as a fall variety than a spring one. What's wrong with that tomato that I had down there? What did you say it was? Leaf curl? Mm -hmm. I don't grow out of it. Well, I got others. Uh -huh. I mean, there's a one They can be transplanted pretty small. Normally, I like for them to get a decent root system. As soon, yeah, as soon as they can pull out of that. Pull out of there. Now, sometimes tray. you may need a little help. Put your pencil or something in the end and push it up. And uh, But it, they can be uh, transplanted pretty easy. Most people don't plant them deep enough. That's the thing. You need to make sure you plant them deep enough. What are good garden crops for cattle? Well, you want to go with uh, one of our, some of our cover crops. We have a red ripper pea that they just absolutely love. It's a very it's a running pea. That's a good one. 
Sun hemp, which is probably one of our best ones out there. That's a good one. I'll tell you what sun hemp will do for you. If you got cows on the other side where your sun hemp is, they'll actually tear down a fence trying to get to it. So red ripper pea, sun hemp, of course, uh, brown top millet's good as well. But those are the two that come to mind that uh, they'll tear down a fence for us. Sun hemp and uh, red ripper peas. Sandra Stokes, I'm a, I'm a Florida native, and I was excited to go find some neats <laughs> for some oil, but I was also confused as to why I never heard of them. <laughs> Y'all went in neats. Those neats got me. No. If you don't know what we're talking about, you have to go back a couple of shows and watch the show on neats. All right. Prepper nurse, Nebraska prepper nurse says, just received my raised bed irrigation kit and the other day your video made it look so easy. I'm excited to try it out. It is easy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. If you have any questions or run into any problems, shoot our CUSSERV at hostels.com an email and we'll help you out. I think I can answer questions now. But you can. I think I can. <laughs> Yeah, John says anything natural can be used to keep wild cats and gray squirrels out of my garden. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, a dog. <laughs> you get you a dog like what we got. She'll keep us. She loves to chase cats and squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. Maggie Jane does. You know, it's, it's kind of weird. Maggie's got two names, Maggie Jane. Maggie Jane. Yeah. It's like a young one. I get mad at her. Really? I call her Maggie, Maggie Jane. Jane. Maggie Jane. Get, get out here. here. Yeah. Uh, I have heard. I don't know if it would work on, it ain't gonna work on cats. I'd heard people getting hair from the hair, hair from the hairdresser hear this? and putting it in the garden, but I forgot what it keeps away. Maybe oh, that's deer. Hair? Yeah, human hair. But I thought that's for deer repellent. I don't think that'd work for wild cats and race squirrels. You'd be cutting my hair in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. Sonia says my peppers are peppering, but turning yellow. No buzz. Get water will fish emotion help. Yeah, but I'm gonna tell you what, Sonia. They need fertilizer. That's what it is their homework because they turn yellow. Fish fertilizer works really good. The problem with fish fertilizer is it does not convert well in colder soils. So you may have to go ahead and hit it with something like 20, 20, 20, something that's gonna convert and get to the plant a lot quicker. Some of these fish fertilizers have to go through a chain to convert and make it available to the plant. And it has to do with the microbes in the soils, and those microbes are not very active in cold soils. So that may be some of your problem. So I would go ahead and use some type of uh, 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, something like that to get something to it pretty quick. Can I run my water from my fish pond through the fertilizer injector? No. You could probably stop your filter up. Mm. 7B South Carolina planted onion seeds the first week of March. Still got time to develop big ones? Probably so. Yeah, it was a little late, but probably so. Yeah. So we plant ours in the fall and over winter, but you guys, excuse me, at seven, can't do it. Y'all have to plant in early, early spring. So, yeah, should be able to. Why is everyone going to raise bed? What is the benefit? Gail Gordon. Well, for me, my raised beds have a side on where I can see it. I have a little bit of hip issues. I can't really bend over. Um, less maintenance. Um, what would you say? Yeah, I think most people have gone to it because uh, less weak for a small, small garden, it, it's definitely easier. Now, the, it has some drawbacks to it, and two of the biggest drawbacks is cost. They can be rather expensive mm -hmm. by the time you buy them and buy the soils to fill them up. Number two is they dry out real quick. Now, that's one thing most people don't talk about raised beds, but they dry out twice as they quick as, as gardening in the ground. Now, I garden on the flat or in the ground, and I have a bigger garden. So simply put, if you've got a small area and you're just trying to grow a little bit, raised beds are wonderful. If you're trying to grow very much, like if you're trying to grow enough food for a family of four, I don't think raised beds are going to do it for you. You can't raise watermelons and raised beds. No, I did watermelons. Well, on, on 
I did work. Oh, one more than that. No, no, I had quite Two. a few. How many did you have? I had about 15. Oh, sure enough. Yeah, sure enough. You need to go look at the Anyway, I, I get carried away. I want to grow a lot of watermelons. I want to grow a lot of corn. So for those people like me that want to grow enough to feed a family for a year, I grow them a flat. Now, I like the raised beds because I can go out there and do everything I need to do. I don't have to depend on him. It's just easy, um, low maintenance once you get them established. But now the cost, we're still trying to figure out what to do in our new raised bed garden. And the route that we wanted to take with the wood, like in our old one, it's just unreal. outrageous. Unreal. Yeah, we had to go to plan B. Barbara Engel says, You guys have excellent quality stuff. Love it. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Appreciate your support. My new Tennessee home. Hello. I use two to three stands of hot strands for hot of hot wire for deer. I have a lot of deer. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people using uh, letter fence wire. That and like motion lights and motion sprinklers. That was, you yeah. forgot that? No, I was just so <laughs> impressed with your knowledge here. You're yeah. pounding deer there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've never had a deer problem, but that's what a lot of people tell us. Terry says, Greg, my tomatoes, peppers, onions, cucumbers, and watermelon starts look great. But my broccoli, cabbage, and kohlrabi don't. Hmm. They're a little leggy and not feeling out like they should. What's up? Mm. Leggy. <laughs> leggy, most of the time, is a light issue. So I don't know if you had some problems there where they didn't get underneath the light soon enough when you was growing the transplants. Uh, hit them with some fertilizer. You'd probably be surprised how well they'll, they'll uh, rebound. How long do I need to wait to harvest my potatoes? When those uh, vines die oh back. Oh, man, mine's a little late this year. When those vines start dying back, you'll know. The vines get big and they start dying Turning back. Yellow. So it gets yellow. It'll be time to get them up. And the ground start cracking. Mm -hmm. And you can reach in there and scratch you up a few. Yeah. Speaking of harvesting, I'm going to be harvesting. If the weather holds out right, I'm going to be harvesting onions this week. Tom onions? No, well, Tom onions, but my, my day onions. They fell over? Some of them are falling over. Some is really hard. A mm -hmm. lot of people are, are uh, our neighbors and people that we work with are starting to uh, harvest their onions. And you know, it's the craziest thing. When people grow onions for the first time, they are so, I mean, it's just mm -hmm. such an achievement when they mm -hmm. do that. And onions are actually... If you Easy. follow the instructions, are probably one of the easiest things to grow. However, what I said was very profound. Right there. Follow the instructions. You got to follow the instructions to a T on onions. If you do that, you plant the right kind at the right time, and you fertilize them right and all that, you are gonna make onions. Easy. Easy peasy. Oh, Lewis says it was Hoss Cherokee Purple Zone Eight A. Mm, that's interesting, Lewis. Um, I don't know what to tell you. If it was a pellet to see, I was going to give you some information there. I would say to make sure, number one, I would look at my seed start mix. Are you using the same seed start mix? Have you moved to a different type? I would look at that first. Does it hold more moisture than the one you used to use and all that? Number two, I would look at moisture. Are you keeping it too wet? Are the seeds rotting in there? Or are you keeping them too dry? And when they, they pop out there, they die from that. So that's the three things we normally look at on um, on, on seed starting, on seed germination. Is seed start mix, too much water, not enough water. But I will tell you this right here. The OP, such as Cherokee Purple, and all those like that, they don't have as much vigor as the hybrid varieties do, and they don't pop up as quick. But, yeah, I, that's the first things I would check. Half bubble off plum, I like that. How often should I heal my potatoes and how high? Well, I tell you what, I, the way I do that is I judge that by my weeds and my potatoes. Once my potatoes get up about six inches and I start having a few weeds coming you up, heal. You just I heal. And I'll do it three or four times. And I don't think you can go too high because what happens every time you heal, that potato just grows through it. Mm -hmm. 
zone A, B. Can I plant tomatoes this week? Yeah. Heck yeah, Rebecca. I think yep. so. Yep. I hereby declare the cold weather gone in zone A. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Gone. And we got tomatoes. Oh, man, I got a bunch of tomatoes planted. Yeah. Johnny, Stephanie, Owens, we know to stop fertilizing onions when they start to bug. Should I stop fertilizing garlic at the same time? Johnny, I'm not a garlic expert, but I would say yeah. so. Yep. Pink Girl for Life. First time growing determined tomatoes, Roma, and Amish paste. If they mature at the same time, will I need to replant another round midsummer? Yeah, I don't think I would plant one from midsummer. It's, it gets too hot here. So I think you probably, if they come off in, in June, which is normally when they're going to come off for you, July is going to get too hot for you and burn them up. So I think you're probably better off not to plant another one and wait until fall and plant you a crop in the fall. July, just that sun just burns them up. We normally about 4th of July, that winds up our going. Yep. We're talking to those Shelby's, really. Yeah, they held on a little bit They held on a little bit longer. Hey, Eric, Eric's with us, Eric Boat, right? Perry Hill says, hey, hey, Eric, hey, hope y'all had a wonderful weekend over there. Hope, hope good Saturday. seeing y'all. Yep, hope Saturday turned that well. Emmy's yield is boron like nitrogen is used quickly or more like phosphorus and spray stays there for a while oh that's a good one there i have to look at it so you have to see what the charge is on it and off the top of my head i can't tell you what the charge is boron is needed in very low dosage not a lot you don't need a lot of it but you need a little of it. <coughs> normally speaking we like to hit it with these little micro doses at times three or four times four or five times during the growing process of those watermelons so that's what I would do. I'd just try to constantly keep some pour to it. Every other time I fertilize, or either every time you fertilize, put your little micro boost in there. You guys are awesome. Just want to say hi. Hello. Well, hello. Thank you. Thank you for your support. I live in Georgia, and I put tomatoes and peppers in two weeks after Mother's Day. Mark Rogers. Mm -hmm. That would be safe. Yeah, that's well safe. That's you way be way after us. We we get itchy around yeah. here. We, we, we get stuff. the itch. I got squash. Let me be careful here. I don't think they're that high. They are that high too. I got squash that high. I'm gonna have mind you this. We'll have squash in three weeks. Mm. Yeah. Last year all I got was tons of green tomatoes. Now now I love fried green tomatoes, but I love some ripe ones too. Joe, I tell you what you ought to try. Pickling some of those green tomatoes. Mm -hmm. It's off the chain. Yeah, we love fried green tomatoes as well, but I, I do love those pickled ones. Yeah. Now, I actually, I need to cook some more. I did some four crop fried green tomatoes, and I hadn't used them in a while. Yep. He said 6A, not dry. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Hosses Church went over tonight, finished up pot tomatoes, peppers, and brassicas this afternoon. Yeah, it was a wonderful afternoon to get out and do some things. I did a little work in the greenhouse as well in the garden, so it was nice. Neil Bordeaux. Question about onions. For some reason, all the ones that are overwinter bulbed early, Two are not very big at all. Yeah, so so Neil, this is what I would I would look at. Early on, these onion seeds need a lot more fertilizer than most people plant to do. So just as soon as you put those not, not the seeds but plants, just as soon as you get them in the ground and you want to extend things along and fertilize months and grow tops. November, December, January, February, you want to grow tops. So you want to hit them a lot with fertilizer, keep them well fed. And then once you make that big top, at the end of February, cut fertilizer off, and that's when the bubbling process starts. So I would I would think maybe you need to revisit your fertility program early on, and I think that may help you a lot there, uh, Neil, on onions. Kiss my verse, 
Yours. I will never use another seed starter in dirt after using yours. My plant love it. Oh, good deal. Thank you. Kiss my grass acres. I love that name. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Wat Watson is. Is it time to give up on a Brussels sprouts and take, uh, and take another decent size ones on the bottom and try them again next fall? Don't Plenty give up. Them. Yeah, don't give up. Let them hang in there, Jeffrey, a little bit. They worth the wait. I guarantee if you make them, but uh, they can test you. Boy. They were tricky. Man. All the stores have to be aligned. Yep. Yeah. But there is nothing no better than roast those things. It's my olive oil. Mm -hmm. mm. Ethan Jerusalem. I ordered some red corn from your site recently and hoping if you can make any videos explaining the history and some more tips growing then until harvest. Yeah, we got a, Ethan, we got a few videos out there. If you've got our YouTube channel, look on there. We've done a few of the years, but it is an interesting story. So originally it was found off the uh over around Charleston, South Carolina. Big growing there forever and ever. It's an old heirloom variety up there. Easy to grow. The stalks don't get real big, so you don't they don't blow over as bad as some of them we've had in the past. It's a great field corn there. Uh, I'm not growing it this year because I grew a bunch of it last year, and I didn't normally grow it every other year. I'm growing Hickory King this year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. You will, I guarantee you'll love Jimmy. We Red. have several videos on harvesting it, grinding it, taking mm -hmm. it off the cob, making grits, making cornbread. Yep. Who the Lee who? <laughs> New to Zone 8A. Anything I should keep in mind? Thank you for all your advice and time. I really enjoy your channel. Bugs, you. bugs, and bugs and disease. So here in Zone 8A, we got a lot more problems with bugs and disease than a lot of other people do is up north. So stay on a spray program. Anticipate having the problems because you're going to have them and you'll be fine. But uh, just understand the bug pressure down here is pretty tough. Down on the homestead of Ocala, Florida, zone 9A, what cover crop do you do well following my winter crop? Would prefer something I could harvest all the way, like maybe zipper peas? Uh, Red ripper peas. Try those. Those are good ones right there. That's a good cover crop. One thing about them, give them plenty of room, because unlike zippers, these red rippers are indeterminate. They run like crazy. So uh, that's a, group, a great one. Red ripper pea, mm -hmm. and you can harvest and eat them. We love to eat them as well. Denise Lopez just want to say, Hey from Texas, this is my second year gardening in 8B, and I have really loved all your videos. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Well, hello, love. I sprouted how I sprouted on my tomato seeds, and now I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> They are not as big as I would think they should be to put outside. How big should they be? If you got them decent size, let's say if you got them two to three inches and you hit them with some good fertilizer, man, those things will yeah. pop, especially if you start getting some warm weather. If they pull out of the trays mm -hmm. real easy, then Go ahead. Ready. Well, Yep. I planted some small ones the other day. Scissor tails, do you have a guide for how much to grow for we a do. family of a year? Do we? Uh -huh. On Hoss University, there's a growing guide. I don't know exactly what the name is. Maybe it's, but there is one on there where you can put for the family and it calculates what you need to grow. Is it a blog post or is it on Hoss? Mm -hmm. Okay. On, under Hoss University. Hmm. You would think I would know, wouldn't you? Remember the show we I had? do remember it, but I forgot. And we had on. the, it's all like a little calculator. Yeah, I remember it now. Yeah. Hmm. Do you ever transplant okra? Yes, we Yes, we do. We do. I got them in the greenhouse right now. Used to, I did never transplant okra. I always direct seeded it. For the last five or six years, I transplant okra every year in the springtime. Now, I will direct seed them sometimes in the summertime, but for the springtime, I'm, I I grew up in transplants. I get a lot better germination in the greenhouse than I do in the uh Then when you plant soil. the second round, you'll direct You can direct see those. Okra does not like cold soils. That's the reason I like to grow with transplants for the first plant in the greenhouse. I planted jambalaya the other day. They already sprouted up. I should probably, within two weeks, I'll be able to put them out. 
Hello, I'm in Tennessee, 7A. Is it too late to plant potatoes and onions? Ooh, probably not potatoes. Mm -hmm. Onions, maybe. Maybe. I mean, you still plant them. They just won't get those great big old onions. But you still plant them. Just make sure next year you get on the... You uh, Normally, I would tell you to plant your potatoes in the middle of March. So you're not too far. You're about two weeks back, but... Uh, Middle of March is going to be ideal time for you. But yeah, you can go ahead and plant them. Next year, try to stay up on your schedule just a little bit better. And you'll make bigger onions for sure. Carl says, what is the best way to water system to water my raised bed? We've talked about it a lot tonight, yeah. Carl. Our raised bed irrigation system. So I have my raised beds was put in in 1998. Yep. So how old is that? Oh, that's 23, 25 years. And I have hand watered them. For 25 years. Up until today. But you only did half of them. Yeah. Because I'm going to wait till my garlic comes out. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend our raised bed kit. The reason I haven't done it at the now is because, <laughs> in my defense, her raised beds are going to need to be redone, and I didn't necessarily want to go ahead and spend the time and energy knowing when I was going to have to turn and redo the raised beds. This year, I planted did. a lot of tomatoes in my raised bed, which I've never planted tomatoes, yeah. and um, I didn't want to water them over the top. All right, so we got a good one here. So, Miss McDaniel says, as a general rule in zone six, I do everything two months after you guys do. Wow. But try and start everything possible indoors to expedite the growing season, but really worry about that hard and off. Man, two months. Wow. 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 So that would put you guys up. If we plant first of March. Put them May. Yeah, first of May. Yeah, after Mother's Day. Wow. Rick says micro boost to the injector or photo feed. Can it be mixed with biofungicide? It's not going to hurt the micro boost. I'm not sure about the biofungicide. Everything's a little bit different, so you might want to check on the biofungicide. I know it won't hurt with our complete organic. Our complete organic is the biofungicide. I know it won't bother with that, but I'm not sure about any other brand. It's not going to hurt the micro boost. Probably not, but just uh, check your label and see. Sometimes it'll say on the label if you should mix anything with it or not. Nancy, do green beans need any kind of fertilizer? Nancy from Nebraska, very little, Nancy. You uh, Beans are legumes, and they don't like a lot of fertilizer. If you fertilize them too much, you're going to make too much vine, not no beans. So very little, very little. Start them off, get them growing well, and then I wouldn't fertilize them any after that. Do you grow any blueberries? We used to back in the day. Mm -hmm. We had some pretty blueberries. Down in the field when mm -hmm. we bought this place. We did. We don't. We, we we probably should. I love blueberries. Our our soil's a little too, our pH is a little too high for blueberries. They don't do real good here. So that's where we Now, we do great with blackberries. Mm -hmm. But our, our pH is a little too high from uh, for blueberries. I wish it wasn't. I love blueberries. John wants to know what's the most disease resistant tomato you would recommend? Halstenator. Halstenator red snapper. I've got the two best disease packages that I know of. Yep. Either one of those, red snapper or Halstenator. Uncle Charlie says, can you just use gin trash for potted plants? I don't like gin trash unless it's been composted. Uh, it has a lot of benefits to it, but it holds a lot of weed seed. That's the reason we like to use composted um, gin trash. Another thing, gin trash doesn't hold moisture very well. It's very porous. And I would recommend if you're going to do it to mix it 50% gin trash and 50% some cheap peat moss. That makes a pretty good mix, but you got to have something there to hold that moisture in there and, uh, but you expect to have some weeds if your gin trash is not being composted. Expect to have a lot of 
So that that we get it's composted. What do you mean compost? It's gone through the heat. It's gone through that process where the the weed seeds and the diseases and stuff has been cooked out of it. Sherry Lou. Hey, Sherry Lou. Hi guys. What is the problem when watermelons are large but dark pink inside instead of red? The curly cues are dried up. Mm, sometimes early on, Sherry Lou, it, and this is frustrating, but it happens to me all the time. When you first start harvesting your watermelons, you got to let them go just a little bit longer than after two weeks after you start harvesting. Once you start harvesting two weeks in, you can pretty much judge it by the curly cue. But that first crop there can be a little misleading there. And when I see that curly cue dry up, I normally try to give it about another week. And that is hard because you want that watermelon so bad. But give those first ones an extra week, make sure they ripen up good. And then after that, you can go on the curly cue. John says, do you have any kind of seeds that would resemble string beans? You stump there? Yeah, I don't. We got some stringless varieties, but I don't know any resemble string beans. I don't know any ones we got. If you're hunting for a bush variety, the whole screen blaze, I don't know why anybody would want to plant another bush mm -hmm. variety than that one. That was off the chain. Now, there's a lot of different pole beans out there, but the bush variety, green blaze. Sonia Moran, red rippers are delicious. I already have red rippers, purple holes, and okra growing strong. Wow. wow. Yeah, the thing about those red rippers, you got to give them room. Barbara says, I got my saplo onions from you this year. Looks like baseballs. But still green. Love it. Last year I got one. Hazelhurst, Georgia. Hey, Roberts, check your fertilizer. Check your fertilizer out. You want to fertilize them earlier, early on, grow a big green part leaf to it. And that's going to support that big bulb. So check, just just re relook at your fertilizer program on your onions if you're not getting big onions. Because you're doing all the right things. You're planting the right variety at the right time. The only other thing could be pH or fertility. And water. And water. Andre Patterson. Hey guys, I ordered some white acre black eyed and okra for y'all. What fertilizer do you recommend? Taylor County, Florida, Ooh, zone 9A. We love Taylor County, Florida. Y'all straight sand down there. I know what you're dealing with. Um, go to our Hoss University site. We have fertilizer guides, Hoss growing guides up there for different things. You want to, you Definitely want to fertilize black eyes different than you do okra. So go there and check out our fertilizer uh, schedules on that, and I'll give you an idea of what you want to do. D. Birdwell, your lemon boy tomato seeds are absolutely fantastic. Totally loving these. Growing great. Uh, you got some lemon boy this I year? I do. D, so we did, I, I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, we did a blind taste test about three years ago. And the blind taste test, lemon boy won the taste test. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Uh, I'm going to take this one. Any tips on growing celery? <laughs> my starts looking great. I'm getting them hardened off. This is my first year growing celery, Zone 5B. This was my first year growing celery. I bought them at the big box store. Transplants. Transplants back in, I want to say, November, October, November. Um, I fertilized them just as I did my onions and garlic. I just treated them the same. Um, and I just harvested most of them and ran through the freeze dryer. That for me here, in AB, which I know is different than 5B, they were just really you should grow them summertime when you're at Nebraska. Yeah. And I tell you what, it's awesome to have you. Backyard home grown celery. Yeah. It's absolutely delicious. Good, from what I've read, you want good organic soil. You want a good, good soil there and just keep them watered. Man, let them go. Do I leave the sprout leaves on or do I come off once I plant? I'm not sure what you're asking about. Do I leave the sprout? Okay. Oh, we got somebody from Sydney, Australia. Rick, glad to have you, buddy. Hello from down under. Down under. 
down 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 on the homestead it says when do we harvest our elephant garlic ocaliflora eric oh you're gonna be close i normally mine is normally two weeks behind my onions i say two weeks a week to two weeks behind my onions you'll notice those tops getting really yellow and maybe laying over a little bit well the so however many leaves you have is however many cloves of garlic you have typically wow. <laughs> so when the bottom leaves start turning brown and yellow it's time to harvest yeah you didn't know that i did i did but i forgot it but i always time mine right behind mine I, I wait for the bottom four or five leaves to start just turn really brown mm -hmm. and it's ready kenny says i thought about under plant peanuts under my tomatoes what do you think mm -hmm. i don't know that i do that kenneth Peanuts going to take a lot longer than your tomatoes are, so I don't think that will work out too good. I think you need to plant them separately. Your tomatoes are going to be well gone by the time you, uh, your peanuts need a little uh, attention. Tios, ah, hey, buddy. Hey, Mr. Greg and Mama Hoss, I was so happy to see y'all at the Keepers of the Old Ways, and it was good to see you as well. And we finally came up with the name of our farm, the Spotted Dog Homestead. Good name cool. there. Yep. It's nice seeing you too. Yeah. Dusty Corner Road, Dusty Corner Road. I planted Country Road. Country. I planted the Tom Multiply onions from you again in the fall, and they're doing great, Georgia. Lots of multiplying. Yeah, it's time to probably dig them now. And they're in six A. Six A. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be when they stop, when they get big. They lose their vigor, so dig them up, split them up, and plant them again. They do so much better. You really just don't want to leave them and not dig them. Nancy, do you grow citrus trees? Nancy from Nebraska. Yes, we have a Sassuma, and um, I did have a Ponderosa lemon, but the Arlie Blast got it. And I had a lime tree, a key lime tree, and the artist blast got that. I had those in pots. But we got down colder than we've got yeah. in several years. You had that lime tree and that lemon tree for oh, years. years. So I bought some new the sister's trees this year, and they're in pots right now. Yeah. Um, but my, my Sassuma, which is, how big would you say it is? Oh, it's big as this room. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big. Room. It survived the Arlo Blast. Ah, uh, Johnny and Stephanie was what the heck is gin trash? <laughs> Good question. So down here where we live, we grow a lot of cotton. We have a lot of cotton gin around. So every about every 15, 20 miles, it's this big. So it's the seed taken out of the cotton. Yes. So they harvest the cotton. They carry it to this gin. And the gin processes the cotton, takes the seed out, and it bails, it cleans it, and it bails this cotton up. Gin trash is the byproduct of all that. It's the trash in there. When they when they clean that cotton, they separate the trash out. And that is what gin trash is. Gin trash is very high in nitrogen. It's very, boy, it's, it's good stuff. The problem is it's got a lot of weed seed in it. So it's very fertile stuff. But it needs to be cooked off. Uncle Charlie, do you have a video of tobacco seedlings yet? I killed my seedlings um, last year. Oh, no, Uncle Charlie. You need to do one. I need to do I was just thinking today. In fact, I was looking at my tobacco earlier. and uh, Tobacco. Tobacco. Tobacco is what we call it. Tobacco. It, uh, it, it's about this tall and it's rooted in. So yeah. I'm getting ready to transplant my tobacco. You need to do a video on it. I need to do a video. you transplant it. I do. Yep. Can the pods of sugar press prints peas be? Heck yeah, John. Yeah, that's the way we like to eat them. The great thing about sugar prints is you can eat them as snow peas, or if they get away from you, let them mature out, mm -hmm. you can eat them as single peas. Mine are blooming. Are they? Mm -hmm. they're, they're probably about four foot tall. Yeah. All right, I'm going to let this is a carrot question. You're the carrot guru. Uh, can you give me some tips on? Valerio carrots, please. I've tried to grow them twice this year already. In felt bags, I failed twice. What am I doing wrong? I'm in Orlando area. Hmm. You need good, fluffy soil. Very dense. And did you fail at germination? 
germination are growing. Um, you want to keep them really moist until they germinate. And then for the next couple of weeks, um, you want to keep them really moist. But once you get them germinated and they're of good size, it's pretty hands off. But um, it can be tricky getting them to germinate. And I do thin mine out. And a lot of people don't. Yeah, now one thing with carrots is the germination. Mm -hmm. Keep it wet. Don't plant them very deep at all, but keep yeah. them wet, wet, wet. You just want to scratch the surface and sprinkle them on there and barely put soil on top of them. Barely cover them up. Half bubble off plum. First time growing black creme tomatoes, only a foot tall, but already blooming. Should I pinch off the blooms, blossoms now? I, I would. I did some better. Even in the ground? I would. I did. They, I want my plants to get up taller. So, uh, mm. yeah, I would do that. At this point in the game, I would. Dang, I missed most of it. My multiplying onions are blooming. Do I cut them back now? No, just mm. dig them up, multiply them, spread them out, and plant, replant them. When they bloom, and that's a false seed here. They actually didn't make a regular, a viable seed. So it's time just to dig them up and... Uh, Separate them out and plant you more. Matt says, Greg, my horse injector tank is cracked on the bottom. Do you sell just a tank? Yes, Matt, we do. I don't know that we have them on the site, but if you will email customer service, they will take care of you on that. Nebraska Prepper Nurse. What type of small melon would you recommend for growing on trellis zone 5B? Well, you're talking sugar about baby? watermelon. I would go with sugar baby or yellow doll. Mm -hmm. Probably sugar baby. Sugar baby. Yep. Mark says, I spoke with Greg earlier this year about the double wheel hoe and its uses in Ohio. The first couple of runs did me in. <laughs> but after that, it's been the best garden I've had. Best garden I have purchased. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Best garden. garden uh, yeah. Mark, that's a good deal, buddy. It's a little you learning curve sometimes. You got to make machine work. You don't want machine work. And you, once you figure that out and how to work it, it's pretty easy. It's a little learning curve and, and using it so it don't wear you out. It's, uh, this has been an hour. Yeah, we got to get out of here. Time has went by All fast. Right, folks, thank you all for joining us. It's been a dead gun blast again. And we all excited about springtime. Yeah. Don't forget the seed sale, 50% off certain items to 11 o'clock tonight. Yep. Our merch is 50% off. And we got sweet potato plants. I mean, 75% off. And you can buy your, we don't have sweet potato plants on sale, but you can order your sweet potato right. straws. We still spring. have some um, plugs. We got a few plugs. We're out at Better Boy and Red Snap. For about two weeks. We got a little low here for about two weeks that we're going to have a problem. And after that, we're going to have plenty more. So yeah. there you have it. Thank you all for joining us. It's been a blast.